Fasten your seatbelts. The foremost authority on 9-11. The best-selling author of Methodical Illusion. And a researcher extraordinaire. Rebecca Roth is about to step up to the microphone and launch into Reality Check, where the light will shine brightly upon the truth. Live from Polly's Plantation, not to be confused with Polly Pavilion, in South Carolina, it's the Rebecca Roth Show, starring Rebecca Roth, and I'm your host, Ram Jet. Wow, I don't even know where that is, but it sounds kind of fun. I've been there before. Ah. It's on Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. <laughs> well, it sounds cool. Hey, there's kind of some exciting news today. I'm glad you could figure out how to phone on in. Uh, and connect with the Rebecca Roth Show. Um, I woke up this morning to some interesting news, and uh, Donald Trump, he is, you know, hashtag your president too, it's all of our presidents, has ordered a release of the JFK files. Now, anybody that's been around for a while knows that the John F. Kennedy assassination files have uh, been a quote-unquote co uh, conspiracy theory because, of course, the CIA created conspiracy theorists for those of you who questioned what just happened when you saw this happen on television and you know about the Zapruder, Zapruder uh, film that's been out there. You've probably seen Oliver Stone's work on this and read some stuff about uh, the assassination of John F. Kennedy. This is actually news to me. I don't know about this. Was there a reason for him releasing this, and, and why now? You know, I think that uh, this date was mentioned as a uh, sealed up until this date. Uh, they were sealed, I think, for 50 years, and that kind of makes sense. Well, it's been longer than 50 years. It's been, what, 54? It yeah. It would be 54 and maybe, years. You know, maybe the, the 50 years started at the end of the Warren Commission or something. I, I'm not sure, but... Uh, I think that the October 26th, which is this coming Thursday date, was in the whole paperwork of the uh, sealing of it. And I think that the president, the writing in that uh, was the president may or could or would have the ability to do so. They haven't been able to release any of this stuff according to the the amount of time they were sealed. So, um do you think anything new will be revealed in this? No. <laughs> that was a quick answer. Whoa. That okay, was a that's real the end of the show, quick... <laughs> and we'll see you next Saturday. <laughs> that, no, I don't. Um, here's why I don't. Because this was a CIA job, and the people <clears throat> remember, if you'll remember the story, if you're old enough to remember the story or have watched some of the movies, some of the characters involved, <clears throat> and the reason for this and the reasons leading up to this. And Kennedy, in a lot of ways, was a lot like Donald Trump. Uh, in a lot of ways, he was very different, too. But uh, there were a few things that he didn't like, and one of them was the Central Intelligence Agency. And you've got to get into into this. And in your, if you read my fourth book, you'll get a dose of this in a very, again, uh, entertaining way of the history of the Central Intelligence Agency, who they are, who they were, where it all stemmed from, and their agenda. Well, and really, Kennedy, uh, you know, ran counter to the deep state. Now, the deep state in 1963 wasn't as well formulated as it is now, but that's probably the thing that he has most in common with Trump is that he runs counter to that, and that becomes problematic for the deep state and what it is they're trying, the agenda they're trying to push. Exactly. And there is a um, an unspoken rule that you cannot mention the Israeli Mossad in anything, not 9-11, not the Kennedy assassination, not the USS Liberty attack, none of it. You will be wiped out or they will silence you, discredit you, or basically kill you. If you do. So, you know, it becomes a dangerous world that we live in to speak the truth. And that's why I chose one of uh, Voltaire's famous quotes about the truth. You know who rules over you when you just basically cannot criticize <laughs> that particular group. Oh, we are there. We have arrived um, at that position. So I, um, I hold out very little hope that anything will be released that will point to really what happened, uh, and mainly because they have so much control. 
And also, uh, to me, this also highlighted something else. And now I'm always looking because I went back into, uh, in my research into 9-11, not just looking at it from, you know, the flight attendant purser airline aviation viewpoint and uncovering what I did about 9-11 and who was behind it and who did it and why, why the FAA protocols weren't followed and who said what and who left out what details and why the pilots didn't do what they were supposed to do and all of those things. And um, my research has brought me back to uh, really an in-depth, well, there's a very deep rabbit hole that runs through this, uh, our history. And so in looking at it and understanding the magnitude of the methodically planned out event that we know as 9-11, I ran into some uh, interesting characters, not just George W. Bush, because he wasn't in long enough to plan this. Now, his dad had been around long enough to plan it, and remember, his dad was CIA. Uh, So there was a lot of connections. We also know about the Brady Bonds and um, all of the uh, uh, financial things that were kind of wrapped into that particular day or the following day. So there was lots of stuff, the Enron, WorldCom, uh, Global Crossing, investigations that conveniently put everything that they needed as far as evidence goes into building seven and then it was demolished at 5 30 that afternoon uh all of that stuff i mean when you get into that was way beyond the planning of george w bush i, I, I know as i look at him and i'm <laughs> he's such a peanut uh, he's such a lame brain that i just I really don't know if he even had a clue. His dad sure as heck could have and most likely did uh, that this was a setup and it was a fraud and a deception and a total illusion and because that's why I use those words. Uh, <clears throat> so when I go back into looking at this stuff and, and I look at all the charts I have, I find <clears throat> something that we've just kind of learned about this week, although I know uh, in our Behind the Galley Curtain uh, membership page, which I forgot to plug at the beginning of the show, so I'm going to do it right now, but I know we've talked about this on numerous shows that you and I have done that are not open to the public. So if you're interested to go a little deeper into 9-11 and other subject matters, um, you can find that over at BehindTheGalleyCurtain.com. You can join up for as little as $6 and I don't no, 60 cents, 50 cents, something. I don't, I never did the math. Uh, around $6 a month, uh, you can come in for a year or $9.11 if you want to come uh, monthly. And you can check the box and have that automatically done if you'd like uh, or not and just come up each time you need to come back. And if you've, you're not paid up, then it'll just tell you. And uh, I think that, you know, one of the things that we've, we've un- uncovered Uh, is that uh, YouTube, Google, and uh, the like that are supporting the deep state, the Clintons, the Nazi kind of agenda that's going on (laughs) under the surface here, uh, that they don't like it when you speak the truth. And that's why they deleted our YouTube channel uh, about two and a half years. And that's why I ended up being hunted down by a drone and I'm now on the run. So... uh, it's real. The deep state's real. They're serious. They're nasty. But the planning of 9-11 brings us back to something else that's just come up in today's news, and that's the Clintons. And it's pretty interesting to see uh, if you take a look. Now, uh, just use nine example as a, 9-11 as an example of, of you know, h- how fast into the Bush administration did this happen? Nine months. He came in in January. Not not quite nine months, about eight, actually. And so, you know, when you put down all, when you see all of this stuff, and you see how advanced it was, and you see the connection between Bush Sr. and Bill and Hillary Clinton, and MENA, Arkansas, and the CIA, and the drugs for arms, and the Iran-Contra, and all of that stuff, it all connects together. You've got to get a chart going, man. <laughs> That's the only way I can keep it straight. You know, it's, it's enough chart. to make me wonder, when, when Bush ran for re-election in 92, uh, just how upset he was, you know, that Clinton won. 
that election. I mean, I, I almost begin to wonder as, as you, you know, you help me dig into this stuff and I realize the connections, if that really wasn't the setup that Bush probably would have won that election hands down had uh, Ross Perot not entered. And it you know, makes you wonder if they didn't invite Ross Perot yeah, into that. Part of the- uh, just so Bill Clinton could win because, you know, he had a, uh, the similar agenda that H.W. Uh, would have uh, pursued, but he had it in a different light, and it also was uh, allowed them to bring Hillary to the forefront. And she was a nobody, an absolute, you know, complete nobody. Well, she was uh, kicked out of the Watergate uh, hearings, wasn't she? <laughs> yeah, well, that a, doesn't... Kind of a lying nobody. That doesn't ri- <laughs> rise to the occasion <laughs> of being a somebody. Well, exactly. So... Um, Oh, I forgot to mention this. If you are, you know, if you haven't read the methodical book series, there's three. There's uh, soon to be four. Hopefully, this uh, fourth book will come out this winter sometime. Um, you, it, it, as a member of Behind the Galley Curtain, you get to buy the books at fifteen percent off. So if you have read the books and you want to give a set for Christmas, you can buy one book, and they'll come with bookmarks, so they'll know there's other books coming that they then they can um, also get. You can get them autographed and personalized, and also there's a Christmas book out now called The Christmas Circle, and you can find that um, also at. Uh, any of the links from any of the, you know, all the books have a web page, Methodical Illusion, Methodical Deception, Methodical Conclusion. They're all dot coms. You can click on autograph books. It'll take you into the store. And then you can see the Christmas circle. Um, it's just four short stories uh, with some uh, artwork done by my favorite artist, who's uh, Jonathan Anderson of Anderson Pet Portraits. And you can see some of his work um, in there also. And if you want to do a Christmas present and you have family that either maybe just lost a pet or have a favorite pet, I mean, th- if he has time, his stuff is awesome. And he does people too, not just pets. So go to his website and there's links off the com, And that has a the in it, the com, And you can link right over to Jonathan's galleries and take a look at his work and just contact him and, uh, you know, get a price for what you want to do. Just all you have to do is send him a photograph. And he did uh, the pay page 63 on um, the soft cover, I know, I don't know about the hard cover, uh, of Methodical Deception, the picture of Kelly the uh, Golden Retriever uh, at fr- uh, the White House. And so, you know, that was a total make-believe scene, and, and I didn't have a picture because I've never <laughs> had a Golden Retriever, but um, I just told him what the scene was, and uh, and he did it. He did the picture, and, and that picture's in color in his gallery, too, so if you've read the books and you know the picture I'm talking about, when you go to his gallery, you'll recognize Kelly, the Golden Retriever. That's Vera Hansen's dog, not mine, because I've never had one. Um, but you can see it in, I have it in a two by three foot um, drawing and it's uh, spectacular. And so it's kind of cool. I just love the fact that um, he was able to do the illustration for us. Hey, I have and a question for you. This is kind of off the subject. Okay. I, you know, I just pulled up the Drudge Report on um, computer I've got here. And I was looking at that primary picture that uh, is on there. And it's a classic picture of JFK and Jackie in the uh, convertible Lincoln that they were driving through Dealey Plaza in. And, I, you know, we've seen it a million times. But I'm wondering, there's a guy right behind JFK. Is that any Eddie Munster's dad? <laughs> the guy with the pointed head or the pointed, uh, yeah, hair thing. Maybe yeah. there's a conspiracy we could... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sick of conspiracies and after this whole Las Vegas shooting. This guy here right right um over here that's a little bit forward of the police officer's helmet kinda looks like uh H. W. Bush to me. He kinda has a similar look. Too bad they cut off the top of his head. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I I don't know, I don't hold out very much hope and I think part of the reason I don't is because I I know you so know how much. it works. <laughs> I know so much how it works, and I know how serious they are about um, killing people that try to expose this. And if you don't think that's true, I want you to just think about Andrew Breitbart and Michael Hastings. Yeah, I'm sure there's a whole lit. lit- well, let me others. ask you this too: if if Trump is willing now to release these JFK files, uh, what do you think the possibilities are that he might release the? Uh, 
Pentagon tapes or the tapes that were, you know, security tapes around the Pentagon on 9-11 that show that it wasn't a 757 flying into the Pentagon. Well, I think the chances of that are zero, although Donald Trump is in possession of numerous copies of a methodical illusion, because I know people sent them to him and a lot of airline pilots sent them to him along with letters. And also he has all three books. And I know that he was uh, hand-delivered a hard copy of Methodical Conclusion at, on the night of the election, the night that he won, and it went immediately to his uh, closest aides through Secret Service. I'm sure they had to x-ray it and all that, make sure that's what it was. And the books are also being read in the Pentagon, so... Um, there's a lot of people that know, and recently I had a United States senator uh, request a set, and so he got an autographed set of books, so he's going to know. <laughs> and even though the, the information is delivered in novels, uh, it's basically what, uh, what happened and what, who, who was behind 9-11 and how they did it, how they pulled it off. And in every single day, New information comes forward to me as I'm writing this fourth book. Um, that just It's mind-boggling that people knew something, and even sometimes they tried to make themselves forget, or they just couldn't make whatever they had make sense. And so what happens is you can see, I actually can, I don't know if you can, but I am beginning to see that stuff like this, uh, Kennedy assassination, uh, the Iran Contra. There are similar players. Some of them are, are the same players, and they go back to the very beginning of the Central Intelligence Agency, World War II, and the Nazis. So it's an interesting history. Uh, they pretty much control everything, uh, and they do so through. I know I tell people this all the time. And after one of the most enlightening books I ever read. Uh, and this was long before I started to look at 9-11 because I believed their official story too until I started to look at it. Uh, and then once I discovered the hijackers, some still alive and some were just admittedly uh, stolen identity or completely fake by the intelligence agencies, uh, then I started to look at things a little bit differently. So uh, I think that if you really get an understanding of how who started this um, Central Intelligence Agency and their agenda and w what they're pushing for. I think you'll see this. But that leads me to this. I feel like right now we are uh, September 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th this week. If this stuff is delivered on Thursday, oh, I, and between that and what I want to talk about next, which is Bill and Hillary Clinton and the Uranium One deal that's just coming out, and the exposure of Barack Hussein Obama, Loretta Lynch, Eric Holder, uh, and numerous others, Tim Geithner, uh, numerous of, 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 of the Obama administration members, all involved <clears throat> in this Uranium One deal, selling our uranium, 20% uh, of our, all of our uranium, to Russia, while Hillary Clinton was the Secretary of State. Okay, so if this comes out, and... You know, I don't watch the mainstream media, so I'm not sure if the CNN would ever talk about this. I, I mean, it's like a house fire they don't want to see. Uh, <clears throat> they were looking at Russia, 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 and trying to blame Donald Trump and everybody around Donald Trump uh, of his involvement with Russia all the while this has been going on. Now, I know that, uh, Ramjet, you and I have done s numerous daily shows about this over the months and I'm, I'm blown away that this is actually coming to the surface at least through some of the alternative media and I think some of it has actually come out um, without really pointing out to the audience what what they really did it's come out through like the New York Times and other quote-unquote mainstream places and it to me it's just sort of an in-your-face now if Donald Trump really or Jeff Sessions really wanted to kick butt and take names. He, it's all right here. I mean, there is a, a huge paper trail. The IRS, who wanted to uh, come after any conservative or conservative group or Tea Party group, as they did with um, Lois Lerner and that uh, Finnish character that was running the IRS, um, if they wanted to 
really take a look at this. Why wouldn't they look at the Clinton Foundation? The Clinton Foundation is receiving hundreds of millions of dollars in donations that are bundled. And so nobody knows where this money's coming from. And I think that one of the things that is, you know, you're starting to see now is this connection uh, to the Secretary of State at the time, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Thank God she's not our president. Her dirty husband, Bill, the rapist, and their involvement with Russia, Russia, Russia. And remember that John Podesta and his brother Tony, they run the Podesta Group, and you can just do a Wikipedia search on that, and you can see that they're a Russian lobbyist group for the mostly the Russian banking, but they handle energy and other uh, businesses for Russia, Russia, Russia. So there you go, the Democrats of the DNC. It's all they're all in bed with Russia. But you see Robert Mueller, that dirtbag. Robert Mueller is hiding 9-11. So you were asking me about the 85-plus cameras around the top of the Pentagon and around the businesses of the Pentagon that the Robert Mueller's FBI confiscated and sealed away from you, the general public? Yeah. Let me just add something to that. You know, what bothers me about that is that they went in immediately and confiscated those uh, tapes. And the question that, that really uh, concerns that is, how did they know where all the locations were so quickly? I mean, it's not like they just wandered into a 7-Eleven and said, do you guys have a camera? They knew already. They, it was already pre-planned. Yeah. They knew exactly where the cameras were, and they knew exactly who to go to and exactly who to confiscate the films from. Exactly. And it's just like the people that received phone calls. And, oh, lo and behold, wait till you find out what we found out about some of those phone callers. Yeah, hello, phone caller, if you're listening to this show. <laughs> yeah, it's all going to come out. Uh, yeah, you've been found. It's pretty amazing what happens when things start opening. It's like the cosmic egg. <laughs> it's cracked. I think I said that the other day to a friend of mine. I was my God, the cosmic egg here has cracked. The 9-11 cosmic egg you, you has know, cracked. You bring this back to Mueller and what he is doing. And, you know, you look at him and his, you know, what he's been given charge to do is look after the collusion aspect, but he's going all over the map. And I think there were some articles that came out this week with regards to who he is and what he does and the fact that his mission has morphed into finding things to accuse people of rather than finding things people have done and prosecuting them. He's making stuff up now. And and a, a good prosecutor came out with a story just the other day about how, you know, back, you know, many years ago, uh, he entrapped him and how he, how he tried to entrap him. And he basically put a stooge in to come in and testify uh, and be in favor of the guy that this guy was defending. And he had a wire on him. And, uh, you know, he was, Mueller was trying to trap this defense lawyer into suborning perjury. And it didn't work because the guy was an honest guy. And as a result, you know, he basically said, hey, you know, what are you doing? You know, what are you trying to do? And Mueller just said, you know, I'm just doing what I need to do. I'm trying to get a conviction. Yeah, and and that's what he's trying to do in this uh, Russia probe is to get a conviction. And he's harassing and, and causing problems for absolutely everybody but associated with But isn't it awesome Trump. that he's just not looking at the Clintons? Because we're going to talk about that Clinton deal right now. And uh, how Bill Clinton and, and his family have ties to Russia, Russia, Russia. Well, you bring up and a really good point because he has the ability to, to morph into any direction he wants to morph into. Uh, and he certainly could go after Clinton if he wanted to, but he doesn't want to. Well, yeah. And, and he won't. And, it's, uh, and this is from the Wall Street Journal now. Um, Bill Clinton received a substantial payout from the Renaissance Capital Group, a Russian investment bank whose executives were at risk of being hurt by potential U.S. sanctions. Five hundred. Well, well, let's set the stage for where yeah. this was. You know, Hillary Clinton came into the Secretary of State uh, in 2009. Right. And the Russians were trying to figure out how they could 
uh, accumulate enough uranium to run all of their power plants and do whatever it is they wanted to do. And they didn't have enough uranium in the Soviet Union or in Russia at the time. And so they needed to acquire it. And so they went after what ultimately was uranium one and, uh, you know, tried to get that. And in order that, for that to happen, it had to be approved by the United States, which consisted of most of the members on the cabinet and the president himself. Exactly. So this uh, company called the uh, Renaissance Capital paid Bill Clinton $500,000 to speak at their conference for one hour. And this is just right before this whole thing, you know, was really getting ready to kick off in terms of trying to get this uranium. 2010. So at Renaissance Capital, that's a Russian investment bank whose executives were at risk of being hurt by possible U.S. sanctions. Now, you remember recently hearing about lots of U.S. US sanctions against Russia because that's one of the things that um, Obama left doing at near the end of his reign. But at the time, at 2009 and 2010, they were doing the infamous reset. Yeah. You know, Hillary gave him the button uh, yeah. to, to reset this. They were trying to improve relations with Russia and allow things to happen, which ultimately now they're accusing Trump of doing. Well, here's a, you know, some more interesting information. Again, this is an excerpt from the Wall Street Journal. Members of Congress wrote to Secretary Hillary Clinton in 2010, seeking to deny visas to people who had been implicated by a Russian tax refund fraud scheme. Members of Congress wrote to Mrs. Clinton, uh, seeking to deny the visas to the people who had been implicated. Uh, and this is in the Sergi Magnitsky affair. Yeah, now how interesting is that? Because it was the... Uh, attorney essentially coming into the uh, Trump administration prior to the election that uh, you wanted to talk about the Magnitsky right. affair. Now, if you remember this, and if you don't just, uh, it's Sergei Magnitsky. Uh, he was uh, jailed and he died in prison after uh, he uncovered, according to the story, evidence of a large tax refund fraud Bill Browder, William Browder, whose grandfather was the the head of the United States uh, Communist Party, Communist Party USA from Chicago, a foreign investor who, by the way, has given up his U.S. citizenship now and is living in uh, England, but is a huge lobbyist for guess who? He's a foreign investment investor who uh, went into Russia in the early 90s, I think maybe 92, 93, along with Edmund Safra. Um, and he was involved with this, uh, the Magnitsky, Mr. Magnitsky was hired by them, who was an alleged accountant, and he turned up evidence that the Renaissance officials, among others, had participated in the fraud. The Renaissance officials had participated in the fraud. The Renaissance officials are the ones that paid Bill Clinton $500,000 to speak. Hello? So do you see that as a <laughs> connecting as a the bribe <laughs> connecting the dots? OK, we're moving right along. So that and this is all coming out again, the Wall Street Journal. And this is from the, uh, the year 2015. So this is not new. It just has been ignored by uh, the deep state controlled media. These proposed sanctions occurred during the Obama administration's attempt at a Russian reset. Hillary Clinton's State Department rebuffed the sanctions request from Congress. Another headline here. A few weeks after the State Department rejected the sanctions request, Bill Clinton was paid $500,000 to speak at a Renaissance Capital Investment Conference. But, you know, that's really just the tip of the iceberg. Yes, it is. Because they were paying Bill personally to speak, which, you know, on the surface was supposed to be completely legitimate. But, I mean, it's obvious that it was a bribe. But what were they doing with regards to the Clinton Foundation at the time? Right. Well, the Clinton Foundation ended up getting a big, huge payoff, too. And it's all wrapped around this uh, uranium one, not just purchase, but it's the logistics of moving this stuff. And if you'll remember, you'll want to look up the words yellow cake and take a look at what we're talking about here. Uh, For his appearance at the Renaissance Capitol, and this is again from the Wall Street Journal, 
For his appearance at the Renaissance Capital Investors Conference, Bill Clinton received a personal thank you call from Vladimir Putin. Russia, Russia, Russia. Bill Clinton helped to grease a deal that allowed the foundation donors to become rich and allowed Russia to control a large stake of the world's uranium supply from the United States of America. So you see, in 2005, Frank Gustra, G-U-I-S-T-R-A, orchestrated his first big uranium deal in Kazakhstan with none other than Bill Clinton at his side. Again, this is from the New York, New York Times, so this is not uh, run-of-the-mill, alt-right, uh, uh, so YouTube, nothing else. It's just this is all coming right out of the mainstream, but you probably didn't know about so it. So let me you? see if I understand this correctly. Well, you've got Hillary in the government position right. as Secretary of State, you know, with the yay or nay approval ability of doing all this stuff. You've got her husband, mm -hmm. former President Bill Clinton, in the background running interference for all of these various companies and organizations and being paid on top of it to be able to clear the way and uh, make it happen. I mean, I, you don't think that's collusion? Well, it, it's amazing. And hello, Robert Mueller. Are you paying attention to this? This is, again, another from the New York Times. This is April of 2015. Frank Gustra and Bill Clinton flew on Gustra's uh, private jet to Kazakhstan, where they dined with the Kazakh president, uh, Nur Sultan, a Nazarbayev. The two men had flown aboard Gustra's private jet to Almaty, Kazakhstan where they dined with the authority of their president. Within days of Gustra and Bill Clinton's visit, Gustra's company called Eurasia, U-R-A-S-I-A, Energy LTD, signed a preliminary deal giving stakes in the three uranium mines controlled by the state-run uranium agency that's called Kazat uh, Tomprov, Prom. Within days of this visit, I mean, come on, you guys, this is crazy. The uranium mines had formerly been controlled by uh, Kazat Tomprov. That's a hard word for me to say. Russia is not my language. And the deal required government approval in the country. Guess what? So they got it. They're whining and dining. This is the husband of the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton. Uh, the mines in Kazakh, uh, Kazakhstan are among the most lucrative in the world. Again, New York Times, April 2015. These are just some headlines. So to put this in perspective again, can you imagine Rex Tillerson's wife going out and doing all of this behind-the-scenes <laughs> stuff and, the and, media and not having— insane. Yeah, they yeah. would go insane. They would so, go insane. Again, here's another one from the New York Times, April 2015. Several months after the 2005 Kazakhstan trip, Frank Gustra donated $31.3 million to the Clinton Foundation. Anyb that, anybody see anything wrong with this? That's what we know about. But you touched on the point about the fact that these many of these things were bundled. So, you know, the Clinton Foundation would get maybe $200 million uh, with consisting of maybe 200 individual donations bundled into, into a place where they then don't have to show that uh, as to who it was that was donating. It was just, you know, a bundle coming in from a certain place. You know, I mean, just you... You know how slimy these people are. Well, it's, I mean, this is not a Democrat, Republican. They're all in bed together. So, I mean, but this would happen to be talking about the Clintons here because in Russia. Okay. So now we know that uh, Frank Gustra had this Eurasia Energy LTD company. Well, guess what happened in 2007? Frank Gustra's Eurasia L Energy LTD merged with Uranium One. In a three point five billion, that's with a B as in boy, dollar deal. And then he probably bailed, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it's uh, pretty amazing. In two thousand and seven, it merged with Uranium One, a South African company with assets in Africa, Australia, in what was described as a three point five billion dollar transaction. Again, this is from the New York Times, April twenty third, twenty fifteen. Uh, uh, Gustra sold his stake in the company, which was estimated at $45 million, through a spokesman, Frank Gustra, 
uh, whose personal stake in the deal was estimated at about $45 million, said he sold his stake in 2007. The company took the Uranium One name and was controlled by Eurasia investors, including Ian Telfer, who became the chairman of Uranium One. So by 2009, Uranium One was in a free fall and it needed help enter Russia. <clears throat> Uranium One stock, again, this is coming from the New York Times, April 2015. In 2009, Uranium One stock was in a free fall down 40%. Rosatom was eyeing a stock, a stake in the Uranium One deal. So they come in. <clears throat> and they are the Russian Atomic Energy Agency. Is, do I say that correctly? Is it Ros Rosatom or Rosatom? I, I'm ver not very good at Russian. Or R O S A T O M, Rosatom, is the Russian Atomic Energy Agency. Are you seeing who Hillary and Bill Clinton and Frank Gustar are in bed with? And hello, Robert Mueller, are you paying attention to this? I mean, no, he this isn't. This is crazy. Not paying this is crazy. attention. This is just reminds me of the 9-11 Commission because they just plain ass didn't want to see the truth. And they hid it from all of us. Russia wanted a stake in the uranium mines because their country lacks sufficient domestic reserves to meet its own industry needs. Again, New York Times, April 2015. Without Frank Gooster's original 2005 Eurasia Energy LTD deal making inroads to the state-run uh, Kazet Omprom uranium mines, Russia would have had no interest in the deal whatsoever. Uranium One pressed the American Embassy in Kazakhstan for written confirmation that the licenses were valid according to American cables. Now, the, again, this is coming out of the New York Times. This is not uh, necessarily WikiLeaks, although I'm sure they've got a copy of these cables. The American Embassy reports to the Secretary of State, and the cable was copied to Clinton, CC. Hillary Rodham Clinton, Secretary of State. What is clear is that the embassy acted with the cables showing that the energy officer met with the Kazakh officials to discuss the issue on June 10th and 11th. Three days after the meetings between the energy of officer and the Kazakh officials, Russia completed a deal for 17% of Uranium One Company. In 2010, when the Russians wanted to up their stake in the Uranium One to 51%, giving them controlling stake, it set off alarm bells in America, again from the New York Times, April 23, 2015. This generous offer to shareholders came within a year of the 17% stake deal. Who's behind this? Frank Gustra, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton. The Clinton Foundation that nobody wants to pay attention to. Well, I believe John McCain was even involved in oh, this yeah, yeah. Uh, in an effort to get this, uh, you know, to happen before approval of the of the fifty one percent Russian controlling stake of Uranium One. The United States government had to sign off on the deal, and this is where a lot of people that signed off on this probably got a little pocket change as well. Well, the point of all this coming out now is that, is really that this was covered up during the time it was actually happening. Right. Nobody knew about the $500,000 or the $145 million that the Clinton Foundation was getting. Uh, it was just pushed off to the side. Right. Now, after the fact that we've seen that, you know, this is what really greased the skids too late now. to make this happen. Yeah. It's too late. But this is what was going on, and we're finding the truth out now, uh, you know, here seven, seven or eight years later, that, you know, it was really, truly a dirty deal, and Hillary was up to her eyeballs in it. Right. Well, the power to sign off on these deals rests completely in the, what's called the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States. I think they call it. Uh, like Cyphus or something along that line. When a company controlled by the Chinese government sought a 51% stake in a tiny Nevada gold mining operation, it set off a secretive review process in Washington where officials raised concerns primarily about the mine's proximity to a military installation. Okay, so they, they get an alert. Experts say that Russia's interest in Uranium One and its American Uranium Reserves 
uh, think about that now. And its American uranium reserves seem to warrant attention at the highest levels. Secretary Clinton was on this committee. Such high-level officials are on this committee because, quote, any deal that could result in foreign control of an American business or asset deemed important to national security warrants such attention. The uranium deal was important to national security because it concerned American dependence on foreign uranium sources. This is kind of way beyond us taking a ride to the space, <laughs> the space station with them. The United States needs uranium for powering nuclear energy plants where we get one-fifth of our power. We don't need to take the energy grid down, I guess, because uh, we have lost control of the fuel to run our, our uh, power stations. But we only produce around 20% of the uranium that we need to do so. The deal made Rosatam one of the world's largest uranium producers and brought Vladimir Putin closer to his goal of controlling much of the global uranium supply chain thanks to Bill Clinton, Frank Gustra, Hillary Clinton, and John McCain, and Timothy Geithner, and, and, and. But, but you see, what's clear here is it's the money that's important to the Clintons, not the national interest, not national, not national security, security, not anything to do with making America great in any way, shape, or form. If they can be bribed, if they can be given funds, if they can be given money into the Clinton Foundation or personally, that is the number one priority. And their number two priority is so far removed from that that it's statistically insignificant. Exactly. Well, the sale gave the Russians control of one-fifth of all uranium production uh, capacity in the United States of America. The ultimate authority to approve or reject the Russian accusation rested with the cabinet officials of the Obama administration on the Foreign Investment Committee, including Mrs. Hillary Rodham Clinton. And then they're asking what's going on with uh, the general that was fired, um, Flynn, Michael Flynn. Flynn. Yeah. You know, what is it's going on? It was nothing compared to this. Absolutely nothing. And yet, I guarantee you, he will be the one that will be indicted and prosecuted and probably convicted as a result of, you know, Mueller's investigation. And yet, he turns a complete blind eye to this, and he yeah. has the authority to go back and look at this, well, this is but what, he won't. This is really the, the issue here. Now, this, this is a, a Google document that I was fortunate enough to get printed off before Google uh, removed it. I put it on the Facebook, on my personal Facebook page, and uh, you know, shortly there, I just you know, read this, uh, shortly thereafter, uh, people were saying it's no longer available. So, yes, Google scrubbed this to save Hillary and Bill Clinton and those others that are involved. The Clinton, this is all, everything I'm reading to you is headlines from the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times. The Clinton Foundation was accepting millions from people in the Uranium One constellation who stood to benefit from Secretary Clinton's sign-off on the deal. The New York Times headline, Cash flowed to Clinton Foundation as Russians pressed for control of uranium company. This is April 23, 2015, the New York Times. This approval process took place while Bill Clinton, quote, was collecting millions in donations from people associated with Uranium One. Uranium One's chairman was a Canadian named Ian Telfer, T-E-L-F-E-R. In the 2010 deal, the Russians offered shareholders like Telfer a special dividend, meaning that he stood to profit from the deal. Telfer's family charity is called the Fernwood Foundation, which donated millions during and after the critical time when the Foreign Investment Committee was reviewing his deal with the Russians. And so you're saying Telfer donated to the Clinton Foundation as in well. In 2009, the Fernwood Foundation donated $1 million the same year uranium won appealed to the American embassy to help keep its mines in Kazakhstan 
$250,000 in 2010, the year that the Russians sought the majority control, as well as $600,000 in 2011 and $500,000 in 2012. His donations through the Fernwood Foundation included $1 million reported in 2000. Now, is this the same Clinton Foundation that I've read headlines all over the world about how they helped in Hurricane Harvey and uh, <laughs> trying to rebuild in Florida. I guess I've missed that. And I trying know. to save Puerto Rico. All They just, you know, the most magnanimous foundation in the world that just donates all of this money that's donated to them to help humanity. Is that the same one? Yeah, exactly right. Uh-huh, sure. Okay, enough facetiousness. Back to the headlines. The Fernwood Foundation donations remain undisclosed on the Clinton Foundation website. This is from the Clinton Foundation that was accessed May 1st, 2016. Telfer's undisclosed donations came in addition to between $1.3 million and $5.6 million in contributions which were reported from a constellation of people with ties to Uranium One or Eurasia, the company that originally acquired the Kazakh mines. Oh, how convenient. So when you bundle stuff and you have an IRS that won't look at you, but the, boy, you, I'll be damned if you start a, a local tea party uh, and you uh, you know support Donald Trump or a conservative Republican, they will come after you. So we have a, a weaponized IRS system that won't won't look at the real guilty people here because the Clintons feel that they're above the law, and so far they are. So far there's nobody with the cojones in this uh, government to do anything about this. But I'm telling you, what I'm reading to you has all been exposed in the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. These are just headlines I'm reading. But, you know, reading this and talking about this, it now all makes sense why she had her own server. You betcha. So that she could deal with this kind of stuff behind the scenes, completely void of any... No uh, no Freedom of Information Act data is going to be pulled off of this server. Exactly. No way, no way in hell. This is one of the things, one of the many things that Hillary Rodham Clinton was hiding from the American people. That's why it's against the law to have a private server. Well, you know, when she was <laughs> questioned about this kind of activity... In the election of 2016, she just basically brushed it off, said that's old news and uh, it was all coincidence. It was just a coincidence that Billy got a half a million dollars and that the foundation got $145 million. million. Just, it was just a coincidence. And it's you'll notice. the way it happened. I know you were being facetious, but you'll notice that the Clinton Foundation did not, has not, and will not contribute to the Vegas shooting or to uh, the Hurricane Irma, or the Hurricane Harvey, or the hurricane uh, issues that hit Puerto Rico, and that was Irma, I believe, that hit them the hardest. So you'll see that um, all of this money of a small fraction goes to charity. A large fraction goes to undermining the President of the United States in our current system of government. Hillary Clinton and George Soros and the money that they have produced via this Clinton Foundation and other uh, foundations are going to um, support and um, purchase people that are rising up, are being paid to protest and to pay to destroy uh, businesses in the towns that they do protest in. Um, they are behind a, an attempted coup and they are in bed with the media. The media is in bed with them. That's why you see they wanted Hillary Clinton to be the president so bad. Okay, so I'm reading this um, document to you here. And like I said, uh, Google uh, has, I'll try to, to get it uh, put into a, a document if I can ever get it again. Or make it into a PDF and probably just uh, put it over on behind the galley curtain. I have it printed so I can put it on a PDF and so it can be available to you. But like I said, these are all headlines from, uh, of all places, the New York Times. And the Wall Street Journal's got a couple of them too. Uh, one of them was taken from the Clinton Foundation website. Uh, so you can see that we have a little problem here because Robert Mueller will not look at this. So if you're on social media, why don't you go ahead and tweet some of this information? You can go in and look. And all of the things that I said, I read headlines, so you can Google them all. 
because uh, every one of these is a is kind of a bullet point that's in bold on this particular document that Google. Uh, it was on a Google Drive, and it, uh, you know, luckily, on my third or fourth try, I was able to get it and uh, grab it and print it, uh, so I'll, I can run it through and have it made into a PDF for you, so you can you can actually access it. Um, but it's it's pretty mind blowing to see, and for me, you know, I run everything back through the 9/11 screen, <laughs> through the filter, the 9/11 filter, because some of these people were involved in the pre-planning of 9-11 and what, what took place. And that's why you see uh, pe people that are on the hashtag never Trump team, that they are pretending to be uh, Republicans, but they're really not, like John McCain. Uh, there's so much dirt going on. And the, this whole, remember the arms for drugs, the Gary Webb, the messenger, I mean, the, this whole Iran-Contra thing, the, we're talking about now Barry Seal running the drugs in Mena, Arkansas, Bill Clinton, and the Bush family inv heavily involved in bo at both ends, both in Mena, Arkansas, and also in Central America. And so these th they're not two parties. There's one party, and it's really run by the intelligence commu community, or um, uh, some people are awake to figure out where they came from, the history. And if you haven't already done so and you have a computer, I would highly suggest that you get in and start looking at the connection between Operation Paperclip, the Nazis, what we did as a, as a government at the end of World War II and brought these Nazis, some of which are Jew Jewish, uh, into work for the OSS, which became the CIA, which now has infiltrated every federal agency. So you wonder why the FBI is not doing what they should be doing? Well, because they're under control, total control. Wonder why the DEA is not doing what you think they're supposed to do? Well, because they've been infiltrated also, not just by the CIA. The CIA itself has been infiltrated. They're completely under the control of the Israeli Mossad. Yeah, it sounds real simple when I say that, but it's a lot of digging. It's a lot of information, and that's why people uh, that... Uh, are out there on YouTube uh, that are paid by them also uh, would try to discredit people that speak the truth like myself and others. Uh, so you'll see people like Mike Adams and his uh, uh, cronies, uh, Jeff, uh, not Jeff, uh, Fetzer and uh, those weirdos, Kurt, Kurt Haskell and, and uh, all the uh, crackpots on YouTube. And they don't care about your freedom. They don't care about the truth. They don't care about the truth about 9-11. They want to cover it up. So who are they working for? And uh, what, lo and behold, some of them claim I'm working for the CIA. But obviously, if you listen to this program, you know better. <laughs> and obviously, even more obvious, if you read my three books, you know a whole lot better. So um, I know a lot of people want me to write a nonfiction book. I want to uh, finish this methodical series with at least one more book before uh, I do that, and for those of you who you know really wonder about the Freedom of Information Act data, it's all, you know I have it. Uh, you can buy it if you're interested to look at it, um, and it comes in a brand new external hard drive, and it uh, it's like $199 from the online store. And you, if you become a member at the behind the galley curtain, you can uh, get a 15% discount on everything that's in the store, uh, the books, the Christmas book. Um, and they're already the Christmas book. If you have people that collect Christmas stories or Christmas books, like adults that like to do that or some kids, um, they're already a reduced price uh, in a bulk price. I think they're five, a bu bundle of five and a bundle of ten, if I remember correctly. Uh, I'm always the last one to, to know this stuff, but I think that's when they're, they're already price reduced and uh, you know, books have free shipping and stuff, so... Uh, you know, you can save a little bit more money and buy some, you know, kind of a nice uh, Christmas gift to give somebody. And it's not going to cost you an arm or leg. You'll get, uh, I think, I don't remember what the price tag is. Um, but you can buy them at a much reduced price if you buy 10 of them. I know that. And then uh, if you're a member, you can just figure out, you know, when you join behind the gala curtain, you're going to get a, a welcoming email. And that tells you the code how to get your discount. So... If you want to do that, that's cool, too. Uh, anything we can do to, to save you some money, and that's what it's all about. But um, 
Anyway, I think that what we're talking about now here is how corrupt and how controlled the media is. And if you haven't had a chance to look up Operation Mockingbird, you can see that. So you can really see how controlled uh, the all of it is. And part of the control factor is also, if you'll notice what happened with the uh, Las Vegas shooting, that immediately, including the night that it was happening, you saw people that created uh, crazy YouTube theories, conspiracy theories. They're there to discredit you, me, and everyone else. Uh, that's what they do. This is people like Mike Adams that came on as a um, ballistic specialist. Yeah, he's a health nut, right? No, the guy is an agent. <laughs> so, but but why is he promoting a conspiracy? Well, there's other people that were involved in psychological operations that were doing the same thing. What does that tell you? That tells you that the false flag, uh, well, the, the claim of a false flag was a psychological operation, not the operation itself. That was just a one lo lone crazy lunatic. And that's why they can't figure him out because he's crazy. And guess what? Any psychiatrist will tell you this, even Dr. Steve Pachenik, if he could figure out that, you know, stop talking about this as a crazy psyop. Um, if you're crazy, it's really hard for someone not crazy to think what would motivate you to do something really crazy. It doesn't matter if it's strangling a kitten or killing strangers and murdering people, as crazy people often do. I, it, you just can't think like a crazy person. And that's one of the reasons they're having such a hard time finding a motive. But you've got people really, honest to God, these are keyboard warriors. They're on Twitter all day long, 20 hours a day, claiming that they were ballistic specialists and they knew there were multiple shooters and all that. But that's BS. I mean, when it started, I started listening to the police scanner. So, and I stayed up all night listening to it. But, you know, if you understand what it's like to be a first responder, then you understand that when stuff happens like this, I mean, they had trained for, I mean, I, I admire this because I've been a part of training for everything. In the airline, we trained for just about everything that could happen uh, uh, in a, a, an onboard fire. Now, I remember one year that some, uh, what do you call them, pilgrims going from some religious pilgrimage, I don't know if it was Mecca or where, wherever it was, some kind of religious pilgrims from a third world country. And they started a fire in the plane to cook their food like they always do out in the desert. And it started the plane on fire. Uh, so we, I mean, the, the, every single thing that happens every year, then the FAA goes over all this, we debrief the crew, and they say how this happened, how to prevent this, what do you do? Uh, you know, this is what got smoke detectors put in bathrooms and, uh, you know, how to fight an onboard fire, what happens when there's a fire, how fast it spreads, what, you know, how toxic everything is. And so that's how you learn stuff. And in the, that's how the FAA does stuff. They are reactive. They're not proactive. So there's, you know, a crash and there's a tree in front of the door then they say oh yeah well we should have said assess your conditions before you open your door especially if there's an armed uh evacuation chute connected to your door <laughs> because it's going to pin you against the wall if that chute can't go out because there's a tree there so it's stuff like that that happen and that's kind of how <clears throat> they they do stuff but you know getting back to the, the las vegas thing you have to understand in, in today's society, because YouTube and um, blogs even, some blogs, are so full of commercials and they get paid for getting a click that they will say anything about any one or any event. But isn't it interesting that people aren't talking about what we just talked about? The Uranium One deal, these are all headlines that came over the mainstream media. You never heard about this on CNN. One, not one of these things was on CNN. And this document that I will put into a PDF, this document is being removed from Google Drive by Google. Yeah, these are the same people that own YouTube that removed my two and a half years of shows after we showed the Freedom of Information Act data. Hmm, interesting. Well, Google is also part of DARPA. So, I mean, all of the social media are connected. I'll, to me, what it is, is a, um, it's just kind of a padded room for narcissists, <laughs> social media. I mean, it is absolute 
it, to me, it's just crazy. But earlier today, I was talking to uh, a friend of mine, and uh, I just, you know, I, I just can't believe, you know, how, how insane the media actually got. But, you know, I had to share with uh, this friend a, a quote from Charles Barkley, and he says, I never worry about social media because I think it's one of the worst things that have ever happened because it gives every fool in the world an opinion on everything. Their opinion does not matter to me because their life is unsuccessful. Just because you live in the basement with your grandmother sitting in your underwear and then you say something about anybody does not make you important or significant. And on that note, to all my trolls that listen in every week, uh, that was you. And that is you. So don't be you. Change it out. <laughs>